I helped over 6,000 people make a WordPress website, but now I'm completely moving off the platform in 2021, and here's why. I've used WordPress for over eight years, and in that time, WordPress has stayed stagnant, or in many cases, has gotten worse. While I've watched more innovative and newer competitors continue to get better and better every single year. The main issue lies with WordPress being so gigantic as an open source CMS, running 40% of the web today, that it is no longer excellent at just one specific business use case or solution. There's a saying, when you try to please everybody, you end up pleasing no one. In this video, I'm going to be sharing six different WordPress alternative website builders that you're gonna love for specific use cases like SEO and blogging, e-commerce, simple one to five page brochure websites, online courses slash membership sites, internet marketing funnels, and lastly, the best website platform for web designers. First, let me explain the three main reasons why I'm quitting WordPress and why you should too in 2021. My goal is to get results as efficiently as possible. And unfortunately, WordPress has been getting in my way. The first reason is maintenance. Over time, I realized I was actually spending more time simply maintaining my WordPress websites than actually building my business or even creating content. This is a huge time suck and energy drain. So with WordPress, you have to worry about updating your plugins, your themes, your WordPress core, and even your PHP version. If any one of these is incompatible with the other, it has the potential to either break your website, cause formatting and usability issues, or leave you vulnerable to hackers and security exploits. True story, my security plugin, which I paid for the premium version and is one of the most downloaded and highest rated plugins on WordPress, actually got a security exploit. Now, the reason why this is an ongoing mess is because all of the independent plugin developers don't talk to each other. So there's always compatibility issues between the hundreds of thousands of plugins and themes available. All it takes is just one outdated plugin or theme for your site to get hacked. Also, there are dozens dozens of plugins for the same exact feature. How is a newbie supposed to know which is the best choice? I actually have a plugin to update all my other plugins, but even then, it actually bricked one of my websites due to incompatibility. Also, look at this. It says that my site is running an insecure version of PHP. Now, here's the thing. With a lot of web hosting companies, you actually can't update the PHP yourself. You have to contact support. Now, the question is, if the newer PHP is usually more performant and higher security, why can't we just update this automatically? Oh, that's right because of the incompatibility issues when it comes to your plugins, your themes, and WordPress core. All right, moving on to the second main reason why I'm moving away from WordPress is the lack of performance and security. Let's face it, WordPress is an 18-year-old software. The technology, the tech stack, and the infrastructure available today, such as with Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform, Microsoft Azure, is vastly different from when WordPress started 18 years ago. Most WordPress sites I've personally tested and seen are slow and vulnerable to hacks and exploits. Now, this doesn't mean all of them, and I'll get to that in a second. Let me give you a simple example of a security issue that affects all WordPress websites from installation. Here we have a WordPress website. If you want to access the login to any WordPress website, all you have to do is add forward slash WP dash login dot PHP. It will take you to this page. Now, here's the thing. With every WordPress website, the first initial user is always admin who has access to everything and can do everything with your website. Now, you can see proof of this when you actually visit a blog post and you look at the author and on many WordPress websites, the author is actually going to be this admin because it is the default user and most users don't bother to change. It. So now looking at this, all we have to do is guess the password or brute force this. And we basically are already halfway there because one, we have access to the login page. And two, we also know what the super user is, which is the admin. So all we have to do is guess the password and we're in. Now, if you want to have two-factor authentication, that is actually going to require a premium security plugin that you're going to have to pay for. So now let's talk about performance because according to Google, slow sites are proven to increase balance rate significantly along with lower conversion rates and hurt your SEO. So so here I've run both a Google Lighthouse test, which is a built-in performance testing tool that's built into Google Chrome. And you can see here, we're actually failing two of the core web vitals. Now, core web vitals are two signals that are going to factor into SEO starting now in August, 2021. I also ran this through gcmetrics.com. And you can see when it comes to the web vitals, we are actually failing all three of the web vitals on this test. And you can see here, the fully loaded time is 5.2 seconds. Now, looking at one of our alternatives here, you can see we have near perfect Google Lighthouse scores. We're perfectly green 
on all three of the core web vitals and a load time of 3.5 seconds with the exact same content, including an embedded YouTube video. Now, what's interesting is if you take off the YouTube video, this load time actually drops down to just 743 milliseconds. Now, the question is, can a WordPress site become fast and secure? And the short answer is yes, but you will always have to continue maintenance to make sure it stays that way. To make WordPress fast and secure, you're gonna need the following. You'll need some sort of premium managed hosting like WP Engine or Kinsta. You'll need a premium performance plugin that you're going to have to configure. You'll also need a premium security plugin to make sure that your site is secure. Although the issue is adding all these plugins is actually slowing down your website. And then last but not least, you'll probably need a CDN subscription to like a Cloudflare or a Stackpath. By the time you spend all this money on all these premium plugins and subscriptions, you may as well have gone for one of the alternatives that's gonna take care of all of this for you right out of the box. Not to mention all the time and energy you're gonna have to spend to configure these plugins. Now, the third reason that I'm moving off WordPress is honestly a lack of innovation, bad product design, and too many tutorials. WordPress doesn't make sense for average people who are non-developers or non-web designers. So the first thing I learned from helping over 6,000 people create a WordPress website is there is too steep of a learning curve for non-technical people. It doesn't make sense to me that every single person has to learn how to completely build their site from scratch by watching hours hours of tutorials. An analogy would be you don't need to know how to rebuild an engine in order to drive a car. See, WordPress hasn't changed much in the past eight years. I haven't noticed any major improvements or innovation compared to the other platforms. If anything, it's actually gotten worse because of the rise in compatibility issues and more and more security exploits. Again, the issue lies with WordPress being so gigantic, catering to 40% of the market, that's no longer excellent at just one specific use case. Here's the thing, most people need a website for just one or two specific use cases. And lastly, just looking at the WordPress UI, I've never really enjoyed spending time here. I never thought that this was a beautiful interface or the most intuitive. Put simply, WordPress doesn't do nearly enough out of the box. We're talking about performance, security, force, HTTPS. All of these should be included right out of the box in 2021, but it is not. All right, so now that that's out of the way, I want to show you six WordPress alternatives that you're absolutely going to love for these specific use cases. I want to say I've thoroughly tested each and every one of these, including dozens of others in order to formulate this list. And I've also become a paid customer of most of the software and platforms on this list as well. First, let's talk e-commerce. Now, I had previously used WooCommerce with WordPress, which is a common e-commerce solution. But honestly, for any e-commerce store today, I would highly, highly recommend Shopify. What I love about Shopify is that it is 100% focused on e-commerce and has all the tools, security, performance built right into the platform with little to no maintenance. Just looking at this dashboard right here, this is something that you don't even have to set up and they give you all the relevant information in one beautiful view, along with tons of reports, analytics, and it's pretty easy to use, especially if you're coming from WordPress. Now, if you are a complete beginner, I do think there's a slight learning curve with any sort of e-commerce software today, even as easy as Shopify is to use, it still requires maybe some learning and some tutorials. But if you do come from WordPress and WooCommerce, I'm telling you Shopify, just so much easier and it just has everything all in one. You don't have to go out and get a bunch of plugins and add-ons. Now there are Shopify apps, which are very powerful and I do recommend those, but to be honest, Shopify for an e-commerce store just handles everything that you would want and would need. So the second alternative, specifically for SEO, blogging, writing, and affiliate marketing, I'm gonna recommend my own platform, which is Wizard. Now, you may think I'm biased, but trust me, we tested dozens and dozens of potential CMSs slash blogging platforms out there, and we tested everything from the Google Lighthouse scores, the load times, the GT metrics, the core web vitals, the technical SEO, and there was nothing out there that quite ticked the boxes. I actually wanna give an honorable mention to a platform called Ghost. I have been a paid subscriber of Ghost long before we ever even had a working product and launched our private beta in mid-June. So as you can see here, I took this same exact post with the YouTube video and everything, and I put it onto the Ghost platform. And you can see we have pretty decent Google Lighthouse scores, but not quite as high as you see here with the same exact content with the YouTube video, with the featured image, with the logo and everything. And when you actually look at the GT metrics of Ghost, they're actually failing the CLS, which is one of the core 
core web vitals. Failing a core web vital is just something that is not acceptable. And this is what I'm getting from Ghost right out of the box. And then again, to show you what we're getting from the wizard platform, and this is with the YouTube video and everything, we're completely green here for the core web vitals, which is better for your SEO. Now, again, to show that this failing CLS is not an anomaly, I'm actually in the ghost community of ghost customers. And this person asked if your site is passing core web vitals, quite a couple people who are not passing the web vitals. We have this person here. And also here we have someone who is severely failing the CLS and actually right on the brink of failing the LCP. Basically, ghost did not tick all the boxes. This is just one small, you know, example is the failing CLS, but there's more little technical SEO things in the back end that could be a lot better. So wizard's supposed to be as simple as possible. We made it our goal that you should be able to make a beautiful, totally finished and designed blog or website in just seconds. And as you can see here, I'm just running through the assessment, which is just a two step process and boom, we already have a website that's good to go. So if you want to check it out, make sure you go to the description, go to wizard.org and try for free today. No credit card required. I would say what's cool about our platform is that there is completely zero maintenance. There's no plugins or updates required. It's focused on being as simple as possible. But again, we have the performance numbers and the technical SEO to back everything up. And lastly, we're on 2021 infrastructure, which is using Amazon Web Services or AWS, the same infrastructure powering companies like Twitter, Netflix, and NASA. Now for the third WordPress alternative, which is for a simple brochure slash portfolio website that has drag and drop editing. So it's mostly for visuals and a website that's not really gonna change much. It's not really dynamic. It's not going to be updated frequently. Honestly, in 2021, I will recommend Squarespace or Wix. And I can't believe I'm saying this because I've used all of these drag and drop builders years and years ago, back when I first started using WordPress. And I would have never recommended any of these over WordPress back then, but it is is 2021 and I do have to give credit where it's due. Squarespace and Wix have consistently been getting better in terms of performance. They also manage, you know, the security. There's not a lot of maintenance that you have to do for these website platforms. And at this point, I think that the simplicity and it's even simpler to use than WordPress. WordPress is actually not drag and drop out of the box. People don't know that. I do recommend Squarespace and Wix. It's an easier learning curve. It's all you need. Performance isn't the best, but I think it's probably a little better than the average WordPress website on cheap shared hosting. Now, if you have an online course or a membership site, and I've done this myself, I've created a custom solution with basically a membership plugin on WordPress. It is a complete nightmare to maintain and also to set up. And it takes so many days, weeks, and months to get it right. Just use Teachable. Honestly, it will get the job done. I use Teachable myself. I've used it for years and been a paid customer for years. And we're moving everything from the custom solution on WordPress to Teachable as we speak. That's all I'm going to say. It handles everything from the student law logins. You don't have to deal with the database and the backups and stuff like that. You know, it's not perfect, but it gets the job done. And at the end of the day, it's more important you work on your business than you actually work on your website. All right. Now my fifth WordPress alternative is for internet marketing funnels. Now click funnels is something that's very popular, but I would actually recommend a newer entrant in 2021, which is system.io. As you can see here, I've tested system.io. It has everything built in. And what's really nice is the pricing is is really, really, really good. It's way cheaper than ClickFunnels. And honestly, ClickFunnels is very slow. It's actually one of the slowest one of these funnel builders I've actually tested. Also, it's terrible for SEO. It doesn't have any sort of technical SEO and meta stuff set up. So, you know, I found ClickFunnels in 2021 that the competition has caught up, been easier to use, you know, better design, user-friendly, better performance, and better value. All right, so my sixth WordPress alternative for web designers. If you're someone who spends a lot of time in Figma or Adobe Sketch and Photoshop, then you are going to love Webflow. So I've tested Webflow a long, long time ago because they've been doing a lot of marketing, but I will say that there is quite a learning curve. Just look at this picture right here. It looks like Photoshop. So here's the thing. If you don't know how to use Photoshop and you're not a web designer, do not use Webflow. I tried to use it for a simple blog. It is not built for that. It can do that, but it is not built for strictly just blogging, SEO, content marketing. They are basically like using Photoshop. Anyone who's used Photoshop, you know, there's a learning curve. That's why I say strictly for web designers, you will love Webflow. What's nice about Webflow is two things. One, you can easily turn a Figma or an Adobe sketch into a working website, and it actually has clean code according to them. Now, just like Wizard, they are 
using Amazon Web Services built to scale, you know, Netflix, Pinterest, Airbnb, Slack, Adobe, all of us are using Amazon Web Services and most WordPress sites are on cheap shared hosting that is definitely not anywhere close to something like an Amazon Web Services or a GCP Google Cloud platform. All right, so that wraps up my six best WordPress alternatives. I wanna reiterate that I've thoroughly tested all of these recently in 2021. I've also been a paid customer of some of these for years and years now, but now I'm finally making the complete conversion and transition over from all of my WordPress sites, moving on to these six different platforms. At the end of the day, it's about efficiency. If we are all after the same results, we need to use software and tools that's going to help us get there with zero maintenance. I don't want to spend hours every single week just maintaining my website so it doesn't get hacked or that it doesn't have compatibility issues. Now, some people will say WordPress runs 40% of the web. Now, that's the number one reason to use it. I disagree. If one of your main reasons to use something is because everybody else is doing it, we don't have the same goals. I'm after getting SEO results. I'm after ranking on Google. I'm after the simplicity and ease of being able to focus my energy on creating content rather than wrestling with my website. All right, so that wraps up this video. I hope it was informative. I wanna hear your thoughts on WordPress in 2021. If you've been using it for a while, if you've used it in the past, if you're currently using it, I wanna hear what are your struggles with it because firsthand through the 6,000 plus people, all these people that I've helped, I've seen firsthand the struggle and I myself have ran into the struggle by you know spending every single day in this dashboard, updating things and having things, you know, just basically putting out little fires every day just to make sure my website stays afloat. This really put a drain on me over time. And at the beginning, I used to love WordPress. I have just grown weary and I've also been open-minded enough to test other competitors. And to my surprise, I have to admit that I think that they are better now than WordPress is. WordPress is really starting to show its age. So let me know in the comments your thoughts on this. If you disagree, if you agree, and if you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, and also to click notifications set to all, and you will get more videos just like this that's going to help you focus on getting more seo results and with your website thank you guys so much for watching i'll catch you on the next video peace